Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to my sh channel. As most of you know, I do a lot of light fabricating here on the channel using my Hobart MIG welder, but I've always been very interested in TIG welding. So I got an email from Vivor, who is uh, similar to like a Harbor Freight. They've got a huge online store with all kinds of different stuff on it. I will leave a link for their website in the description. Definitely go check it out. They got a lot of cool stuff on there. So they ended up sending me a TIG welder to try out, which is perfect because I was already looking for one. So today we're gonna take a look at this thing and see if it's any good. Here is the Vivor welder. Before we take this thing out of the box, I just wanna do a little bit of a durability test, kind of bang this thing around a little bit. I'm sure Vivor's not gonna to be too happy with this. As long as it survives what I'm about to do to it, then uh, we'll be able to actually try it out and do a review on it. Well, that's a good start. Got my phone. Got it. I'm not gonna let that happen again. Should be safe now. Now this one here, I call the Keystone Challenge. I think it's All right, well, that wraps up for the uh, durability test. We're gonna go ahead and open this thing up, see if it's still intact, and if this thing even works anymore. Let's see what we got here. I don't think uh, Vivor is gonna be sending me anything anytime soon. What? You've got to be kidding me. This thing doesn't have a scratch on it. That's some really good packaging in there. All right, so here it is. This is the Viver TIG 210P. This is a stick welding machine, TIG welding machine, and it has a clean mode. Not only includes everything to do TIG welding, it does not come with a stinger for stick welding, and it doesn't come with the stuff to do the clean mode. I do not know how to TIG weld. I am new to it. I've always wanted to learn how to do it. TIG welding can be kind of intimidating because Anyone that's done any kind of welding knows that TIG welding is kind of the top tier of welding. But TIG welds are some of the best welds you're ever gonna see, and that's why a lot of people are intrigued by it, like myself. Now, the reason that I believe that this is gonna be the perfect TIG machine for a beginner, like myself, is because I don't know how good I'm gonna be at it. I don't wanna cause any damage to the machine. So if I go out and buy a $1,500 or $2,000 TIG welding machine, and I'm not doing it right, and I'm causing some kind of harm to the machine, or maybe I find out that I just suck at it and it's not for me. Now I'm stuck with a $2,000 machine that I may or may not be able to return. I will have Amazon links in the description for this machine. I will also have links for the Vivor website where you could also find this machine. Now there are some other costs that you're gonna incur like filler rod, which I purchased separately, and you're gonna need a regulator for the argon gas. I will also leave links for both of these items in the description. And you're gonna need a separate argon bottle if you don't have one already, that's 100% argon. Now I'm not gonna get super specific on all this stuff because I really don't know a ton about it. That is why this is gonna be a good video for other beginners out there because you're gonna be able to see firsthand if I, myself as a beginner, can figure this machine out and actually put down some decent TIG welds. Hello. <laughs> so first thing, let's talk about what we got here. Like I mentioned, I already got the regulator separately and the filler rod. It came with the TIG gun. 
We got our ground clamp. This is a dual voltage machine, so it comes with the adapter, so you could use it on 110. Comes with the hose for the gas. It's got some hose clamps. Came with the tungsten and all the other pieces that you need to put the TIG gun together. And a whole bunch of other shit that I have no idea what it is. Now this TIG torch came in this little blue bag. And I don't know who puts these things in these bags, but they must be a fucking wizard or something because there's no way that you're gonna get this back in this bag. But that's okay because I like to hang on to little bags like these for when I go to Walmart or Target. Pretty handy to keep around. Well, let's see if we can get all this stuff put together and figure it out so we can start doing some testing on it. Whatever. All right, so the first thing I wanna do for this setup is I wanna put this TIG torch together. So let's take a quick look at all the pieces that they sent here for the TIG torch. All right, so first off, we have our TIG torch, the body. Right here attached to it is the cup gasket is what they're calling it. It's kind of like a rubber type material and it's supposed to seal the cup or the nozzle so that the gas doesn't come out uh, anywhere else besides the end of it. So they sent us three different cups or nozzles and it's a four, five, and a six. I'm not sure of the exact significance of that. So if anybody does know, please let me know in the comments. We're going to start with the largest cup because I know that that will give us more gas displacement on the weld itself. And then right here we have our collet body and our different collets depending on what size tungsten that you have. So that moves us here to the tungsten. Uh, they send you one piece right here. It's a red tungsten, which I will leave a chart up right here, which will show you the significance of the colors. They give you two different back caps here. Uh, they give you like kind of a short stubby one, and then they give you a longer one, which will accept a full piece of tungsten into it. I think a lot of that is just preference. And then also on this TIG torch, it has a finger trigger on it to initiate the arc. So the very first thing that we need to do is sharpen our tungsten. And I will leave another chart up right here where you can see depending on what angle you sharpen it at, it will give you kind of a different arc size and penetration. So we're gonna go ahead and sharpen this somewhere in that 15 to 30 degree angle. I'm obviously just a beginner, so I don't even have anything to compare it to. So we're gonna just start with that and just kind of get our feet wet a little bit. All right, since I don't have a belt grinder, I'm gonna go ahead and use my dual drum sander, which is kind of overkill. But I threw that tungsten in this drill, so I'm basically gonna go ahead and just spin it and kind of grind it down to where I want it. All right, right there, you can see the angle that I have on it. I'm not sure uh, if it's good or not, but we're gonna try it out. All right, let's go ahead and put this thing together now. Like I said before, I'm gonna use the cup with the largest opening just so we get the most gas coverage. Again, not sure if that's the right choice or not, but I need a starting point, so that's it. Now they give us three different size collets right here, and I found that the uh, 2.0 fits the 16th inch tungsten perfectly. So we got our tungsten sharpened. Let's go ahead and put this thing together now. So the first thing we're gonna do is screw in the collet body. And there's kind of a little bit of a grip area right there. I'm gonna go ahead and use my welding pliers and just give it a slight little bump just so I know it's nice and tight. Next thing we're gonna do is slide in that collet and then we're gonna slide in our tungsten. We're gonna leave that tungsten stick out a couple inches for now and then we'll screw on our back cap. Now when we screw this back cap on, it's gonna push that collet into the collet body and it's gonna squeeze on that tungsten. So you wanna make sure that you have it tight enough where it'll kind of hold it in place for now until we get that cup on and then we can adjust how far that tungsten's sticking out and then we can tighten this thing down all the way. Next thing we're gonna do is screw our cup on. You wanna make sure that you get it to seat into that cup gasket nice and tight so none of that gas leaks out around that edge there. All right, now that we got this thing somewhat put together, with all the information that I found so far, it sounds like you don't wanna have your tungsten sticking out any further than the width of the cup. So if that cup is roughly 3 8 inches wide, we don't wanna have that tungsten sticking out any further than 3 8 from the tip of this cup. So we're gonna go ahead and get that right where we want it. And I believe that if you have it in a little bit, that's okay, but you just don't want it out any further than that. So I think that looks like a good length right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this stem up so that tungsten should not move anymore. All right, so for right now, that's gonna be it with assembling the TIG torch. Now we can start hooking all the stuff up to the machine. <coughs> Subscribe. 
All right, since I got this TIG torch all put together, I went ahead and connected everything up to the machine. So let's take a second, I'll run you through that real quick, and then we'll go ahead and turn this machine on. Here we have our TIG torch, and there's a little TIG torch symbol right there. That's where our TIG is gonna hook up. And then you have the trigger signal right next to it. And then next to that, you have the positive terminal, and it's got a little diagram of your ground clamp. So that's where we're gonna hook our ground clamp up to. And then over here on the right, is the stinger symbol for stick welding, which obviously we're not gonna be doing that today, so we're gonna leave that alone. The only other thing is the tube for your argon gas, and that's pretty easy. It's right on the back of the unit, and it hooks right up to there, and they give you the hose for it and the hose clamps. Now right here, we have our flow regulator for the argon gas. Like I mentioned before, this is 100% argon gas for TIG welding. Now from what I've seen, it looks like we wanna have this right at 20 PSI that's a good at least starting point. So I got that all hooked up to the bottle and you wanna have a little bit of flow when you set that up just so you can see uh, that it maintains right at 20 PSI. Now that we got the torch, the ground, and the argon gas hooked up to the TIG welding machine, we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. But first, I've got it plugged into a 240 volt outlet. That is a 50 amp outlet but I have it hooked up to a 30 amp breaker. Now I use this for my plasma CNC table and I use it for my Hobart MIG welder and it should handle this little TIG welder just fine. So the on button for this machine is right on the back corner of it. Just flip that thing on, that's it. All right, so let's talk about what all this stuff means right here. First off, on the bottom left corner, we've got 2T and 4T. 2T is going to be when you press the trigger on the TIG torch, it's going to initiate the arc and as long as you're holding it, it's gonna to continue to hold that arc. Once you let go, the arc will go away, and that's it. So that is 2T. 4T, you press the button once and let go, it'll initiate the arc, and then it will continue until you press the button again, and then the arc will shut off. So for today, we're going to leave it in 2T. I think that that's gonna be a little bit easier for me to get used to. Next, we're gonna come over here to the bottom right side, and we've got spot, DC, and pulse. So on the spot function, that's basically going to give the TIG torch a quick arc for making spot welds, and it will hold that arc for a certain amount of time, and then it will shut it off. Uh, in the DC mode, that's gonna basically allow us to TIG weld normally. It's gonna give us consistent amperage the whole time. It's not gonna change. It allows the welder to manipulate that puddle however they would like. When you go to the pulse setting, that will basically ramp up the amperage higher and then drop it down lower in a certain time frame to give you that coin effect when you're welding. I believe that style of welding is more of a preference and there may be certain applications where it's better to do that versus having just a constant amperage. So today, for learning purposes, I'm just gonna start in the DC. I want a consistent amperage the whole time. Over here in the top right, we've got TIG, MMA, and clean. So TIG is obviously TIG mode. MMA, I believe, is for stick welding. And then clean is for the clean mode, which we don't have any of the parts for that. So today we're gonna to be concentrating on the TIG welding function. So now that we have everything set where we want it, now we're gonna come into this lineup right here. First thing that we're gonna start with is our pre-flow. The pre-flow I have set at one second, which means that when I hit the trigger for the TIG torch, it's going to allow that gas to start coming out for one second before it initiates the arc. That allows all the impurities to get away from that weld before you start that arc and start welding. The next thing is gonna be our peak amps, which I have set at 60. I'm actually gonna go down a little bit lower than that. So that is the amperage that we're gonna be welding at today. Obviously that's something that you can make constant adjustments to as needed. The next thing it's gonna to go to is post flow, which I have set at 3.2 seconds. I actually can increase that a little bit. I know there's a certain rule of thumb once you let off that trigger on the TIG torch, it allows the gas to keep flowing for an additional four seconds or whatever you have it set at to keep all the impurities out of the weld until it cools. All right, so that's gonna be a pretty basic setup for the machine and all the settings just for me to get started. Like I said, I'm a beginner, so I just need a starting point just to test the waters and kind of see where I'm at. And then as I learn, I can start making adjustments and do some fine tuning. All right, now the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time for me to make of myself. That tastes real good. <laughs> All right, now I got myself a piece of 14 gauge cold rolled steel, which means that it has no mill scale on it, so it's a lot easier to kind of get it cleaned up, which brings me to the next point. It's very, very, very important with TIG welding. 
the surface that you're welding needs to be extremely clean. So I'm gonna use my uh, little Milwaukee two inch die grinder, get the surface nice and clean, and we're gonna do some practice runs, just adding a little bit of filler rod and running just a straight line across the steel. We're not gonna weld any lap joints or nothing like that quite yet. I got my 1 16th mild steel filler rod right here. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. All right, let's take a look at my first couple of passes ever. Basically, I went in a straight line here. I struck the arc and I kind of watched that puddle form and then I dipped the filler rod in there and then I moved it a little bit straight, dipped the filler rod, moved it, dipped the filler rod. I just kind of did that for about, I don't know, an inch. And then on the second one, I pretty much did the same thing. I went a little bit further. Then on the third one, I did a circle and then I dipped the filler rod, I did a circle, I dipped the filler rod, and I just kept doing that all the way around. And you can see that one got a little bit wider and it gave a little bit more of that coin effect. I mean, it doesn't look good, but uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be, at least for starting out. All right, now that we laid down a couple of test passes on that flat piece of steel, we're gonna go ahead and use the Langmuir Crossfire Pro CNC Plasma Table. I'll have a promo code in the description, Spicer Designs, if you wanna save some money, if you are interested in one of these tables. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a couple of test plates or coupons that we can do some lap welds and some tees to see how this thing does in those angles and welding two pieces of plate together. All right, now I bet you guys are wondering where I got this Keystone from. Well, that's none of your business. Just kidding. Come on out here, Keystone girl. Now you might've noticed the Keystone girl is wearing a little bit more appropriate work attire. Uh, do you wanna tell them what happened? Put it back in there. Hello. <laughs> I got written up by the HR department. Now, since the Keystone girl was so good at hitting the start button the last time we used the plasma table, I'm gonna go ahead and have her hit the start button again. So uh, let's get it on. Hey, that's sexual harassment. I don't think HR would approve of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all you're gonna do, hit that start button. You just gotta click it or tick it. <laughs> <laughs> the hell is that about? All right, we got our test pieces cut now. I got them all cleaned up so they're ready to weld on. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a lap joint, basically. We're just gonna take the two test pieces and overlap them, and we're gonna weld that seam right there. Now I'm gonna use a spare welding hood and put it up to the camera and hopefully try to get a good shot of this thing where you can actually see that arc. So uh, let's give it a try. All right, here's my overlap pass. It's not the greatest by any means. It's not awful. Probably could have used a little bit more filler rod. It's a good starting point. The good thing about it is you can always go over the pass and kind of clean up your weld if you get a couple spots that are kind of inconsistent. Let's go ahead and try a couple more of those test plates and see if we could do a, a T-joint. All right, here is my T-joint. You can see uh, there's quite a bit of fill in there. It is a little bit tricky to get that filler rod in the right spot where it draws it into the puddle just right and it doesn't just ball up on you. So definitely gonna take some getting used to, but I think this is a good start again. So I'm um, just gonna keep chipping away at it until I develop my skills better and better. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Like I told you at the very beginning, I am a beginner. This is the first time I've ever TIG welded. So if you are an experienced TIG welder, please don't beat me up too bad. If you have any suggestions uh, for me starting off, please leave it in the comments. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know what I could do uh, to make some corrections here. Now, if you are interested in TIG welding like myself, this is a great option. This machine did an awesome job. Now I have nothing to compare it to, but I was able to strike an arc, I was able to make a decent pass with this thing and everything felt really smooth. I don't see any reason why this machine couldn't do everything that you needed to do, especially when you're just starting off. 
So I will have Amazon links in the description below. You can find this machine for $220, either on Amazon or on Viver's website. I'll have links for both of them. Big thanks to the Keystone Girl for all of her help today on the plasma machine, even though she got a little sassy at the end there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. All right, I was thinking tonight we could do like some heavy drinking. You're not used to having all those clothes on out here, are you? <laughs> I'm hot right now. I'll take them off. It's gonna be a windy winter. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? <laughs> You're so smart. I know. <laughs> You're a lucky man. Mostly pretty, but I'm pretty smart too. You can kind of see my camel hook. You can. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Cut it off? These exact words were on the Weather Channel. It's gonna get windier and tonight. Did he get fired? <laughs> no, they promoted him. Tom's killing. <laughs>